all our natural heritage india's wetlands are among the most vulnerable and most threatened habitats wetland ecosystem of india have been the target of physical alteration usually drainage for many decades and more recently pollution has become a serious problem only in recent years have efforts been made to protect remaining wetlands in many cases endangered and threatened species have been benefactors of the efforts in the past wetlands and marshes were often seen as wasteland that should be drained or transformed but now we are recognizing the value of these areas to birds and other wildlife wetlands not only support wildlife but also function as the kidneys of our ecosystems filtering and cleaning water that comes into them they also protect humans by buffering floods and stabilizing shorelines if there is magic on this planet it is contained in water the water is a teacher and a healer offering lessons for those who choose to hear them and beauty for those who would see it when land and water converge at horizon paradise is regained but when water evaporates and earth becomes parched paradise is lost india has a wealth of wetland ecosystems that support diverse and unique habitats these wetlands provide numerous ecological goods and services but are under tremendous stress due to rapid urbanization industrialization and agricultural intensification wetlands have a poor public image but are the greatest natural assets for mankind wetlands are one of the most threatened natural habitats in india rapidly expanding human population changes in land use development projects and improper use of watersheds have caused a substantial decline of wetland resources the falling number of wetlands is posing a major threat to ecological balance in india most problems pertaining to india's wetlands are related to human population india contains 16% of the world's population and constitute only 2.42% of the earth's surface which is putting more pressure on natural resources The wetlands are shrinking according to the survey conducted by Wildlife Institute of India. Almost 70 to 80 percent of freshwater marshes and lakes in the Gangetic floodplains have been lost during the last 50 years. As a matter of fact, during the last century, 50 percent of India's wetlands have been lost. We have also constructed uh, farm ponds, uh, water storage dams. was those tanks in the first tank to make available water for wild animals and just to improve the water regime in the forest about 22% of the wetlands in india have been lost primarily through human settlements 19% due to fishing and 23% through drainage from agriculture removal of vegetation in the catchment leading to soil erosion and siltation contributes to about 16% loss of wetlands pollution from the industries contributes to about 20% loss of wetlands the direct benefits that human beings derive from wetlands include production of fish timber and fresh water the indirect benefits include flood control recharge of aquifer and storm protection wetlands have the capacity to retain excess flood water during heavy rainfall wetlands vegetation help control soil erosion thus stabilizing the shoreline and protecting human lives from storm healthy wetlands are essential in india for sustainable food production and potable water availability for humans and livestock they are also necessary for the continued existence of india's diverse populations of wildlife and plant species a large
large number of endemic species are wetland dependent. The wetland loss in India can be divided into two broad groups, namely acute and chronic losses. The filling up of wet areas with soil constitutes acute loss, whereas the gradual elimination of forest cover with subsequent erosion and sedimentation of the wetlands over many decades is termed as chronic loss. In the last decade, there have been a huge uh, plunge in the groundwater. Uh, and not only this, if you see, uh, this year is a very important year because there has been lo uh, less of rainfall and as a result many reservoirs actually uh, faced uh, decline in their levels. So uh, if you see, these are the states like Punjab, Haryana, you know, uh, the Deccan uh, states like Andhra Pradesh, Southern states like Kerala and Karnataka, which showed a huge decline of their reservoir level, and Maharashtra also. So, if you see, these are the states uh, which actually shifted its focus more and more on groundwater. So, on one side, due to erratic rainfall, which is happening due to climate change, there is loss of water from the reservoirs, reservoir uh, levels are coming down, and on the other hand, you see people becoming more and more dependent on groundwater. So if you see the central groundwater board map, actually, you will see that um, major portions have been marked as red areas, which means that there has been a huge decline if compared to the last 10 years. Central Wetland Regulatory Authority has been ineffective in even seeking lists of wetlands from the states for notification, the two-decade-old National Wetlands Conservation Program has nothing much to show for the funds it has spent for the protection of 115 wetlands in the protected areas. Water quality is directly proportional to human population and its various activities. More than 50,000 small and large water bodies are polluted to the point of being considered dead in India. Draining of wetlands have depleted the ground recharge. Recent estimate indicates that in rural India, about 6,000 villages are without a source for drinking water due to the rapid depletion of groundwater. Today, most of the wetlands in India under the control of the government and the involvement of society in the maintenance of these wetlands is almost minimal. What is required today is that the government ought to become a facilitator instead of controller and an owner of wetland management. All significant decisions pertaining to the conservation and welfare of any wetland should be initiated and promoted by the end users of the wetland. Unfortunately, just the reverse is happening at present. This rule provides for identification of such wetlands that are socially and culturally important to the local communities. The wetlands should also be identified on the basis of their ecological importance to the local communities. The primary necessity today is to protect the existing wetlands. Of the many wetlands in India, only around 68 wetlands are protected. But there are thousands of other wetlands that are biologically and economically important but have no legal status. Out of all the water on the earth, only 3% fresh water is fit for human consumption. The fresh water is becoming a rare commodity and developing countries like India are struggling to conserve fresh water sources. The impact of climate change is showing its effect on the day-to-day -day life of the people. If you see Punjab and Haryana, which are the major uh, food grain producing areas, they are also showing heavily uh, overexploited areas, which means groundwater has been extracted to the extent which cannot be replenished by natural recharge. Another problem is urbanization. If you 
uh, see urbanization means concretization so natural recharge is cut off earlier what used to happen you used to take the ground water used to naturally replenish it but nowadays it's not happening it's all concretized so on one hand you have erratic rainfall then you have huge dependence on ground water you have a decline and you have no source to recharge back the drought like situation in many parts of india has forced mass migration putting extra burden on the society and the government agencies water scarcity is leading to fall in crop production and death of livestock farmers faced with harvest failure have no choice but to migrate sell their livestock or take loans the farmers agitation and water scarcity has forced the government to sit up and think about the water conservation policy the niti aayog or planning commission's report on water is rather alarming it says that delhi along with several other major indian cities will run out of water very shortly the report goes on to state that 40% of the country will have no access to potable water by 2030 many towns and cities in india are already complaining about water shortage in the list of 122 countries rated on quality of potable water india ranks 120 India is likely to become a water stressed nation shortly. Although India has 4% of the world's water, studies show average availability is shrinking steadily. India has the highest number of people in the world without access to safe water according to a report released by Water Aid on World Water Day. The country has 75.8 million people without access to clean water. There are apprehensions and concern about the growing scarcity of water and supply of potable drinking water to nearly 50% of villages in India. The women and children have to spend 3 to 4 hours in fetching water from far off places for performing daily household chores. Despite India's multiple water reserves, slow fed glaciers, rivers, lakes in the Himalayas, Uttarakhand Himachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir face acute water scarcity as tributaries, rivers and rivulets have either dried up or have shrunk in water capacity. Check dams have no water or very little of it. This water scarcity is affecting water supply to municipalities and creating panic among the communities. Unplanned urbanization and spiraling population have resulted in severe water crisis in India. The state and water utility departments are fighting a losing battle to plug the gap between demand and supply. Nearly 17,000 natural water sources have either dried up or are in the process of drying up in Uttarakhand, a grim reminder of the deteriorating water solution. According to Uttarakhand government estimates, Almost 60% of all water sources have dried up in the hills in the last two decades. The situation has become grim as the farmers try to drain out the ponds and rivers to save their crops. Some people dig out stones for construction work and clearing hills for agriculture by destroying the ecosystem as more and more space is required to accommodate the growing population or do agriculture to support them there is tremendous stress on the land the construction of roads hydro power project is adversely affecting the ecosystem of the hills chopping off more than 7 lakh trees for building four lanes road in himachal pradesh and uttarakhand recently is also responsible for the drying up of the natural water resources the water storage capacity of nainital lake is decreasing with increasing rate of sedimentation The recharge area of the lake has dried up due to encroachment. Nani Lake is no longer a self-sustaining lake. In 2017, Nani Lake shrunk 12 feet during the summer season as the entire town was dependent on it for water. The quantity of water that is being pumped out to meet the needs of tourists and locals is far more than what natural sources feed the lake with. It was only after the monsoon that the Nani Lake sprang back to its original configuration 
illegal construction on river beds and encroachment of land of dry river bed is further putting stress on the ecosystem. Hills and mountains are being dug and eroded to create more space for construction of homes or for agriculture. Sand mining, stone mining and riverbed mining is also affecting the ecosystem. According to the revenue decode of Delhi government, out of the total 107 water bodies, including bowlies or step wells, only 640 are traceable while 108 bodies have disappeared. And more shockingly, the traceable water bodies too have been encroached upon. As the natural water distribution system becomes precious, animals, birds and marine life are adversely affected. As the water gets dearer for animals, they start suffering. In search of water, they start migrating towards water sources leading to conflict with local people. Fresh water is used and reused for human consumption, but it is getting polluted in the process. Water pollution has been extensively documented as a contributor to health problems in human beings. In India alone, about 140,000 children die from diarrheal diseases each year after using dirty water according to UNICEF report. Poor people have no choice but to use polluted water for their daily chores. The coin divers spend 4-5 to five hours every day in polluted water to earn their livelihood. Most of them suffer from cancer or respiratory infections. Many water bodies near urban areas are highly polluted due to dumping of garbage and hazardous chemicals. The quality of water has deteriorated in some regions, creating catastrophic health hazards in Malwa region of Punjab. The level of uranium in the groundwater is 50% over the World Health Organization's norm, due to which residents suffer from cancer and numerous health problems caused by toxic water. Excessive use of chemical fertilizers and pesticides has turned Malwa into cancer capital of India. In Punjab alone, at least 18 people die every day due to cancer. Water occupies a unique position in the cultural ethos of India. Water is considered holy as it purifies human beings of all sins. The Ganga and the Yamuna are considered to be India's holiest rivers, but the water downstream is highly polluted and in most of the places unfit for human consumption. Yet over 500 million people living along the banks of these rivers still rely on its natural systems for their livelihood. The believers still have faith in the healing power of these rivers, but many of them are hesitant to plunge into the filthy sludge of river. Water has always been considered as a nectar of life. Let's take pledge to preserve and conserve this nectar of life. If we turn a blind eye to the problem, then this nectar of life will turn into poison of life. Let us all save water for our future generations and save our ecosystem.